Well, hello everybody. We're back. It's the press conference updates. Daniel Farker has just done it, or when this is uploaded, it might be a couple of hours or whatever. I'm not 100% sure, but we're back with it. As I've said, it's a press conference. It's a thing that we look forward to throughout the week where we figure out the injuries or the updates or the sagas that are going on, which invariably are so at Leeds United. Make sure, everybody, you're checking out the Patreon, onelees.com as well. There'll be a transcript up now, an opinion piece on all of the latest bits and bats around in the press conference. If you want to catch up on the on the written word, make sure you do so. We've got opinion and pieces going up there about Joe Gelhart soon as as well so make sure you check out all that sort of stuff everyone feature player analysis and all that good stuff which i know you guys like okay so we're back here discussing that word that press conference okay so what do we figure out from it uh, well i have to say it was an interesting one and before i start everybody we are sponsored by ipm group um Leeds united fans within this space security cctv surveillance keep it in the Leeds united family make sure you check those guys out link in the description below but it was an interesting press conference wasn't it some, uh, I don't know, it was, Farker came in, he was speaking about Robbins and Coventry, and I don't really want to focus on that too much. I think we know with these press conferences right now that Daniel Farker naturally will compliment the opposition. He will compliment Mark Robbins. He was he was asked if, you know, he, 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 he respects and speaks to managers. It was almost phrased as if it was like, when you're under pressure sort of thing. It was like, do you speak to other managers who are under pressure as such? And it was actually, it was quite an interesting question. Cause it's like, it was putting it on Daniel Farker a little bit after a win. Cause it's like, not really. I mean, I'm not under pressure. Three wins in four, three clean sheets in four. But the question was almost phrased in a certain way, which I found quite interesting to be honest with you. But yeah, he was just saying that, look, I stick to my job. And from what I understand, uh, from what I've been told, Daniel Farker is very sort of like isolated and introvert when it comes to his own company. Gets in the press conference, afterwards doesn't speak to any of the journalists leaves that's his thing so I can't imagine with many managers he has that sort of relationship where it's you know I'll just pick up the phone and ring you he might have that but uh, according to according to the question and the answer of course it, uh, it, it isn't that case so yeah and listen what do we figure out about the injuries, everybody? Uh, Solomon is probably the interesting one and one that we have to get onto. A back injury, which kept him out last week, and now it's a hamstring injury. What I will say is apparently the hamstring injury isn't literally going to hamstring him for, <laughs> for a long time. Apparently he could be back for the Norwich game, but there's a doubt over the head. You know, you know what it's like with hamstring, everybody. Sometimes you can just be a little bit explosive and it can twinge again. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, Solomon... I think when we get him on the pitch, he's going to be a big bonus. Uh, but as I said, you know, for the 50 grand a week we're paying, which was obviously drummed up by Ajax. Ajax is interested in the summer for the 50 grand a week. I am very much sort of, um, I don't think we're going to see a lot of him. And this is why I think Ramazani is going to be the guy who's going to be the main man of which kind of we thought anyway. So yeah, it, it is, will we get him back? Will he be fighting? Will he be fit and fighting throughout the season? Let's not let's not generalize and say that he's going to be out let's let's keep it in context he could be back for the Nor Norwich game but it does give you a little bit of an indication of maybe how his body's breaking down a little bit still going into this season a back injury and then a hamstring injury like how does that even happen <laughs> you know I thought I thought to be fair Farker was going to say look it's a it's a it's a back injury again but but unfortunately not so hopefully Manor will be back and I'd love to see him in that number 10 you know I know we've spoken about that before but I think his intricacy his vision, his, his technical ability would be really well well used in that position as well. But Ramazani, for me, stays out on the right. And he will stay out on the right for this one. Oh, the, the, the left, I should say, but not the right. Uh, Pascal Strauch, an adductor injury, which I think I think he has been out for before in his career. The adductor, I remember it with him and Urente back in the day. So, uh, yeah, massive. Massive, and the reason why it's big as well is because you guys might think, "Oh, Verba's going to come in." Well, Verba's out as well, um, and I don't know whether or not. I mean, we got notifications through from Live Score this morning saying it was a meniscus injury, that of which we've attributed to Manor Solomon before. And yeah, how will this transpire? How how how, how long is he going to be? There was a little bit of doubt over his head. Farker couldn't really confirm whether or not he's going to be back for the Norwich game or whatever but we've got a busy period coming up haven't we where Norwich are playing we're playing Norwich we're playing Sheffield United we're playing Sunderland so we readily need a lot of our better players fit for, for these this this month don't we to you know to, to, to climb up the table and I'm expecting Leeds United to do so but yeah Max Verb's another one he's not really got into it all this season that horror show performance against Middlesbrough which I did give him a bit of credit for because I think it was blown out of proportion a little bit more than it should have been I didn't think he was great but I didn't think the whole team was great <laughs> for for that game in particular but they're the two big ones for this one Solomon and, and James it looks like Bamford's picked up an injury but there's some there's sort of like uh, conflicting reports suggesting that he might still be fit for the weekend but he has picked up another little knock Furpo as well 
has picked up a knock, um, but he looks to be okay for the weekend. And this is where it comes, squad depth comes into it, everybody. We've spoken about Joel, Joel Peru previously, him or Matteo Joseph. You know, the big question right now is it's not going to be that. It's going to be, you know, is Schmidt going to be coming in for, for Furpo? Is it going to be Byram if if he is out? You know, what's going to happen with the back line? Is it going to be Ampadu back there? It's looking like that's going to be clear. It's going to be interesting now the the midfield dynamic as well. Does he go with an experienced lad in this division in Joe Rothwell, who's had more minutes on the pitch than Al Tanaka, or does Tanaka come straight in? I wouldn't care if it's either of them, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be interesting now to see a little bit of the balance. I feel with Strauk and, and an adductor injury, it seems pretty serious. And we know Llorente was out for a while with one in particular. I wonder now how this is going to work. Is it going to be a case of Ampadu going at the back again? Because Verba is also out. There's Debayo there as well who can, can play on that right-hand side. There's an option there. Are you going to risk that against the better teams? Probably not. So I think Ampadu is going to come back to centre back, which once again, I mean, it was earlier, it was it was January ish, wasn't it, when he went centre back for that period of of, of time of which Leo Lees did well. I, I didn't want to see him at centre back. I wanted to see a full season of him, to be honest, in centre midfield, and I think he's been good so far, Ampadu. I think he's been really good actually. So I don't want to see him go into the back, but it is what it is. He's going to have to go into that centre back role. I think he will do that. I don't think Debayo is going to come ahead of him. So then you've got the balance in the midfield of Gruev, who for me is very like for like when it comes to Ampadu. But I'm, I'm insanely positive about that midfield. I think I'd have Gruev in there now 100% because he is that profile that Ampadu is, in my opinion. And then I would have a balancing act on that other double pivot. And I'd probably be looking at, as I've just mentioned, Tanaka or Rothwell. But I don't care who starts. You know, I'd, I like Rothwell a lot, as you guys know. And I really like Tanaka. I like Gruev as well. I just think there needs to be a balance in that double pivot. And I think with those two in there, um, there will be that, which is exciting stuff. So it's going to be interesting because it's going to be a bit of an experiment. And, you know, when you look at the game this weekend, if we if we win the game this weekend, the positive about it is you've done it with a really varied squad. You've got arguably two of or three of the best players out of their positions. Mano Solomon not playing. Ability-wise, he's probably one of the best in the squad. Pascal Strauch, Strauch out the squad and Ethan Ampadu out of his position in central midfield so it's yeah interesting everybody but my squad selection for this one would be Eli Mele and Jaden Bogle right back I would have Rodon and Ampadu at the back I think I would do that ahead of James DeBio to be honest with you just basically because I think there's more experience there and DeBio I think throwing him in for a game of this magnitude where Leeds need to keep this consistency up is is something of which I think will be quite tricky for him. Let's say, a hypothetical, I think if you chucked Debayo in against Cardiff, he wouldn't have struggled. But this is going to be a team, you know, had you right, Ellis Sims, which, where we struggled last season with, with Amp I think it was Ampadu, wasn't it, and Strauch there as well at, 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 the, at the Coventry City Stadium. So, yeah, I'd go with that. Furpo, if he's available, I will go him at left-back, obviously. If he's not available... I might even go Byram, you know. I think Byram was better last season at left-back than he was right-back. And I just wonder for this game if you kind of need that. I know, And I know we've brought Schmidt in, but I do wonder throwing him in for this game. Let me know what you think on that in the comment section below, everybody. Would you go Schmidt or Byram? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Schmidt we've bought. We, we just know you're going to get sort of a... Uh, I always say like an average Joe performance from Byram. But that's kind of what you need in a game like this, really. You don't probably need anything too ridiculous is is Schmidt maybe a better use, user of his left foot than, than Byram we can't really tell that right yet um, but yeah let me know what you do I'm quite, I'm quite conflicted about that you know my midfield and up top I'd be going on the left Ramazani central Aronson right Nonso and up top Matteo Joseph that's what I'd be going for everybody let me know what you think in the comment section below bit of a difficult press conference this one I feel not great for Leeds United but guys fascinated to hear what you think please comment in the section below your lineup. please comment what would you do in the midfield I'm genuinely interested to know what you guys would do also I want you to tell me what you do with Peru and Joseph in my opinion Peru we're seeing the Joel, the Joel Peru that is a top finisher but is this the option is this Joel Peru's best place off the bench making an impact that way because Matteo Joseph does all the grafty stuff he's got you know I, I believe he's a better presser I believe physically he's better I think he looks fitter on a, on a football pitch than Joel Peru and we did see Joel Peru do the old Peronymous last year which we can't forget about there can't be revisionism there so is the position for Joel Peru if we're not in fact going to a 4-4-2 with a double pairing of him and Matteo Joseph is the position in this team for Joel Peru off the bench being an assassin like he is that could be a position for him who knows but 
Let me know what you think in the comment section below to that, everybody. Really appreciate your support. Make sure you're liking, letting me know on all the opinions in this in this video. It's a tough one for us, but we're heading on over to do across the pond at three o'clock. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, make sure you, you, you head on over over there as well for the, the Generation Leads, which will be coming soon. Um, but guys, really appreciate your support. I'll see you in a bit. Cheers.